What I always loved about Advancing Black Pathways, just the name of it, is that it was very tactical and very intentional around black people and making sure that their pathway to financial success was clear and helping them make their way down that path. I'm most proud of the progress that we've made and the intentionality in 2019. It really highlighted that we could make an impact by engaging our community, engaging partners, and focusing on what really matters for African Americans. Advancing Black Pathways is focused on strengthening the economic foundation of the black community by investing in education. The role that education plays in creating wealth in the black community actually starts by leveling the playing field. It's gonna close the racial wealth gap in America by putting students on a pathway on careers that they would not have otherwise been exposed to. Our goal is really to change the way African Americans live, to ensure that they are building wealth and assets. We want to see more African Americans not only moving into the middle class, but owning homes, creating jobs, creating opportunities for people within the community. And I think this opportunity with Advancing Black Pathways will lead into that in a very positive way. Everyone sees this as a seminal moment where we can actually move the needle to create more inclusive growth. I just feel really excited about the opportunity that's ahead of us. Hi, I'm Sekou Kalin, Head of Advancing Black Pathways for J.P. Morgan Chase. And I'm Vicki King, Operations Executive at J.P. Morgan Chase. Thank you for tuning in to the second episode of Advancing Black Pathways Career Readiness Series. In each episode, we'll share valuable insights from senior leaders and also helpful tools and tips for young professionals navigating their careers. No matter what industry you're in, there are some functions that are essential to every business. And operations is one of those functions. Today, Vicki is going to speak with us on how we could begin to explore a career in operations. And she'll also provide some insights into open positions that you can explore today. So Vicki, let's talk about your background and how you began a career in operations. Thanks, Sekou. Um, actually, I attended Otterbein University, which is a college here in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, I had a double major in business administration as well as human resources management. And I started my career at the firm actually as a teller. And I worked my way through the organization in different departments, uh, learning as I went along, and then finally landing in operations. I really enjoy detail, and so it's been a really good fit for me. I've worked in a number of departments, and I think that's one of the advantages of working at J.P. Morgan Chase is the multitude of opportunities that provides for people. And that's great to hear because often we enter our careers and build up on these experiences as you have done. But let's get into this first question. So when we hear the term operations as it pertains to financial services, like, what does that actually mean? And, and if you could go further, like, give us some examples of areas at the firm that truly have a, a big operations component. Yeah, so when I think of operations, I really think of it as being the heart of the organization. Because if you think about what our sales teams do on the front line, they're the legs, arms, and face. But if we're not really good in operations, we actually don't deliver on what they promise. Uh, we actually have uh, spanning from fraud to lending to item processing. Uh, for those of you who remember checks, uh, the processing of checks, to doing research for our bank, for all departments within the firm, to other banks, uh, working very closely with the Federal Reserve, cash services, and supplying cash not only to our branches, but to customers and large businesses. So it really spans a multitude of uh, operations within the organization. Well, that's helpful. So let's you know stay there in terms of descriptive. I like it because if I'm on the call now and I'm an entry level operations analyst, or even let's say my older brother or sister is watching and they're mid level uh, operations looking for a mid level operations role, like what does that person do like day to day? So if I I've graduated from college, day one on the job. 
Walk us through what a typical day is for entry-level operations role. Yeah, so it really varies uh, depending on where you're working. But to give an example, uh, I'll give two extremes, an entry-level position and a mid-level uh, manager type role. If it's entry-level, it could range from being in our service center, supporting our customers on a number of operations, uh, whether it's filing a claim, especially during today's times with all of the challenges that we've been facing with COVID. A lot of customers made purchases that they really want to return and they're not able to do that. So the employee would help the customer through that transition and help them be able to regain those funds. Uh, and that's kind of a, their day-to-day, -day, what they, they could be doing. If you're mid-level, uh, you could be in an entry-level team leader role. You would be leading a small team helping them answer questions, getting a, the right answer to the customer the first time, uh, keeping track of your production, making suggestions on how we can improve the operation, streamline processes, uh, attending meetings, certainly, uh, doing one-on-ones with our employees, uh, and leading team meetings. As I think about, we have some college graduates on, on the call, and often for many professions, what you major in isn't necessarily exactly the topic uh, that you're gonna pursue when you enter your first job. So as you think about skills, you know, what type of skills or background does someone need uh, to be in operations generally? And then also like we talk about being passionate about something or that being your differentiator, like what should people be passionate about as they think about operations? Yeah. As I think about someone entering the workforce today, Sekou, uh, one of the things I like to tell them is to be flexible. Because like you said, your college degree may not be what you actually end up doing uh, for your career. And so be flexible on what it is that you'd like to learn. Uh, think about it from a big picture perspective. You know, how can you add value to the role? Uh, what would the role look like if you made changes? you know, how things fit, whether they're coming into your department or going out of your department and the role that you play in that, uh, be a great problem solver. That's really key from an operations perspective. And as far as passion, I think of passion just doing what you do and being the best at it. Uh, that's how I like to think about my career. That's the value that we all add to our roles. Got it. And, and sometimes that attention to detail, I guess, for operations is important. And you talked about checks earlier. Mm -hmm. And so this brings another question to my mind. You know, how has technology you know, created or enhanced that operational experience, whether it's for a customer or an employer? How has that altered how we are trained? So just talk about the role of technology and ops. Yeah. So over the last few years, technology has changed the way we do business. And coming through COVID, it has even been more so. We're able to do things remotely now that we never thought we could do uh, remote before. Uh, we've changed uh, things such as how we process checks. The beauty of J.P. Morgan Chase is that we're on the cutting edge of technology for the financial services in, uh, industry. And we actually created uh, the virtual processing of checks. So when you get your checks back as an image, we actually started that technology for the industry. And that's only continuing. Uh, COVID has pushed us forward so that we can do things faster. Uh, we are able to route calls to people's homes, things we never thought before. Uh, we're partnering with the Federal Reserve to make changes in how they process. And it's all through technology. So uh, it plays a major role in how we do business. This is great. I want to get a little personal now and, and hear about your experience or even tips for what to do when you're one of a few. As you're starting your new career, you're excited. You know, navigating is never easy. So as you think about young Black professionals in this space now, what tips or advice would you give them? Yeah, so I have a young professional son uh, in the industry. And so I like to think that I provide him guidance on a silver platter. And that's the same thing that I share with, with the uh, young people watching the video. Uh, one of the things I told him first off is to remember this is business, this isn't personal. And so we're not gonna take things personally. Uh, but at the same time, to be very confident in your abilities and what you're bringing to the table. And I think when you approach it from the, with those two things in mind, you actually deal with issues a little bit differently. 
the reality is you're going to be one of few, if not the only, uh, on a lot of teams. And we are making great strides in changing that. But I think it's something you have to get comfortable with before you come into the firm, know that that's the reality of it, but that we certainly are working to change it. So, um, you know, don't be afraid to ask clarifying questions to get the job done. And certainly don't be afraid to exert uh, initiative and show that you're willing to do more than you're being asked. I want to pivot now to talk about pathways and in this case, operational pathways. So while there's no exact one way to do it, but what are the typical types of career tracks for people in operations? Yeah, so that, and like you say, that varies. Uh, but one of the things that I'll share a little bit of my background, I did not grow up in operations. Uh, as a matter of fact, I grew up in the branches and started off as a teller uh, to get me through uh, until school started. And I worked my way into various positions uh, to get to where I am today. And I think for me, that's the secret. It's about, it's less about growing your career and it's more about expanding the breadth of what you know. And that is really true in operations because it's so varied. And so I could see someone coming in, taking a, let's, let's start at mid-level, uh, say a team leader role, learning the job very well, progressing to that of a division lead, potentially then leaving that area, taking all of that knowledge with them, going into another area, potentially in the same role. So don't be afraid to take lateral moves. Learn what you can from that role and then advance your career from there. So like I said, the beauty is uh, operations is so varied that you can learn and be in operations really your entire career. So with COVID-19, and you mentioned this earlier, how has that impacted operational jobs? Are they work from home or work remote? Will people be going into the office? What impact, if any, do you feel uh, COVID-19 or just the way forward will have on how operational employees work? Yeah, um, how we're working today is not typical of an operations environment. And I don't see us in large numbers remaining work from home in the future. That said, we certainly will have more people working remote in the future than we had prior to COVID-19. And the reason why is because we've proven through technology that we have the capability from a resilience perspective to work in both environments. So I see us expanding uh, what we do uh, prior to COVID as far as work from home, but traditionally it's an in-office. Uh, one of the things about operations is up until now we've been predominantly paper-based. And when you have a paper-based environment, you have a need to be in the office. We have a very large uh, commercial cash vault you have to be in the vault to do the work. Uh, we have a lot of work that we do on court orders and levies, which is paper coming from various uh, municipalities. And because they're a little behind and moving to uh, image-based environment, it requires us to respond to their work and how it's presented. So I do see opportunity for some individuals to work from home more than what we had in the past but I do think predominantly we will be an in-office uh, type of operation. Again, great insights here. So as I'm sitting home, a college student, college graduate, and I, I hear this information and it's helpful, incredibly helpful, but what are some of the just pros or, or cons even of working in an ops role? Mm -hmm. Well, from a pro perspective, one of the things I think that operations provides that a lot of the other positions don't is a tremendous opportunity for someone to learn to lead individuals and to lead a team uh, because there are lots of teams because of the sheer number of the operations team. Outside of the branches, operations has the largest number of employees within the firm. And so I, I really see that as a pro. In addition, I think the environment overall is a little more relaxed, uh, a little more casual than some of our uh, professional businesses. You don't have to come to work in a suit and tie every day. I definitely think that's a pro. Um, the other thing is you can learn in multiple areas without actually leaving the line of business. So I had gave some examples earlier, but you could very easily work in our international uh, domestic collections area. Go from there, work in our fraud area. From there, you could go back and work in our court orders and levies. 
Uh, from there, you could work into our customer research department and it goes on, um, you know. So I think those are all definitely pros. Um, from a con perspective, you know, operations probably isn't quite as sexy as working in some of the frontline offices uh, that people would think, especially uh, in the investment bank. Uh, but it is a place where I think someone could have a very um, admirable career uh, and it would give you a lot of runway, a lot of opportunity to change direction uh, in what you want to do. Uh, another con would be that you probably could be faced early on in your career with working some late hours or and or weekends. But uh, for me, it's the last spot that I've been in, in in my career. And I will tell you, it has been very enjoyable. And I honestly wish I had made the transition to operations sooner. As someone who's run sales teams and sales groups, you know, I can attest to how critically important operations are because they are that voice of the customer and they can translate what, what the client and salesperson is saying into an actual process. And so that's been my experience on how critical ops has always been, especially as you talk about what we do for our clients. But in your words, and someone who's in ops, let us know from your perspective why ops is so critical uh, for the firm. Yeah. Like I said uh, earlier as well, I look at operations as being the heart of the bank. We can't function without operations doing their job, doing it efficiently, and doing exactly what it is that the customer asks for. Uh, we interact on behalf of the front line. Oftentimes, we will speak directly with customers to make, you know, get clarifying comments on what it is that the customer is looking to do. Um, and, uh, you know, so it just makes it the heart of the bank. And, uh, you know, and I don't mean that just because I work over here. I mean it because I truly feel that way. Uh, our employees and operations are so committed and so focused on doing the right thing uh, every time for the, um, um, uh, the customer that it's just amazing to me some of the things that we're able to do and uncover uh, the fraud that they're able to pick up and stop before the customer's account is even impacted. So um, I believe in ops. I like that. That's a new tagline. Hashtag, I believe in ops. So Chase employees have been instrumental in assisting customers with their needs at this time, no matter what role they're in. And I think about that even as Advancing Black Pathways, where I'm proud that we launched a financial hardship fund for HBCU students. And it was able to help hundreds of students impacted by COVID-19. So we helped cover transportation costs so students could get home after their campuses were closed. But we certainly are not alone in doing this work for customers and communities at large. So Vicki, can you share with us how you've seen operations or our firm truly help our customers? Yes, uh, you know, everyone knows that the government issued the stimulus checks. I think that's probably one of the best examples. And it's not just one customer, it's hundreds of thousands of customers. And what our customers don't realize is that when the government sent us the files, the files were incorrect. And so our operations employees had to make corrections so that those payments were credited to the customer's account seamlessly. So the result of all that work, the beauty of it, is the customer never knows that it even happened. And that's what we're really geared at doing. So doing what we do and doing it totally uh, without the customer being impacted. So the opposite of that is had they not completed those and made the corrections on those files, those customers would not have received their payments. And uh, that would have been very impactful during a time when people were really in need. Uh, if I think about COVID, uh, another example would be how we assisted our customers in deferring payments, whether it was for a car loan or an installment loan, a home equity, a mortgage. We actually spun up that process in three days. I have never seen us work that fast to get something in place to help customers to ease their minds. So um, again, I think a great outcome for our customers first and foremost. And, the firm's commitment to helping our customers. 
So Vicki, we're coming towards the end. And so I would love to end on some advice and insights. You've given us a lot of knowledge on operations, but what's the one piece of advice more broadly that you would give to recent graduates? And also candidly speaking, how would you talk about your experience as a black professional? And what words of wisdom would you offer to the black professionals out in our audience right now? Yeah. Uh, thanks, Sekou, for that question. I guess, you know, when I think about advice to a graduate, what I would tell them is to come into their new role, looking at it as a career and not a job. If I think about myself, I didn't make that transition until I had probably been working with the firm for several years uh, when I thought I could actually have a career here. Uh, there is no better place to work than J.P. Morgan Chase. Uh, I'd also tell you to be patient. You're not gonna be CEO tomorrow, but you certainly can get there. And I feel that the time is right. Uh, when I think about my career and what I've gone through as a black female in a predominantly white male world, uh, there were times when I didn't feel included. Uh, I know there were times when my peers uh, did things and they didn't include me in it. Um, I know that there were times when uh, I may have said something that they didn't understand where I was coming from. And, you know, when you go to meetings and you're the only black person in the office or in the room, and you just feel a little bit uncertain about how you fit in and what you should say. But what I will tell you is that I think that the time has come and that we have made and are making great strides in improving that environment from an inclusion perspective within the firm. Uh, I think that managers are more aware of hiring diverse candidates to get our numbers up. This isn't a number game. This is about giving us equal opportunity because we're qualified to do the job. Um, and so I feel really good about that right now uh, for the firm and for our recent graduates. I just wanna tag on there with a message to all of you. And that is, you are enough. You've been able to navigate this path and it's put you where you are, whether that's a recent college graduate or newly entering uh, the workforce. And I will say that the commitment to the top talent is how firms will thrive and survive. And so we have a deep and dive on ensuring that we have the best and brightest talent and in particularly from Advancing Black Pathways, the best and brightest black talent because that's how these organizations will continue to serve its customers, to innovate and make impact. So you have given us a deeper look into the operations field. But one thing that I'm sure our audience wants to know is what roles are open right now? So for all the job seekers out there, Vicki, can you give us an example of, of a couple of roles that they could pursue today? Uh, we have a number of roles that are open in operations like we always do. Uh, specifically on my team, I have uh, several uh, exempt level roles in my quality area that I would love to have some diversity in. In addition to that, we've just rolled out new technology for our service centers and the team that supports that technology is hiring as well. So if you'd like to learn more about our open operations roles uh, by clicking on the link, on the ABP career page under the section that's titled Exploring a Career in Operations. Feel free to filter by the location to see what's available in your area. Thank you for tuning in to our discussion today and make sure you register for our next episode on July 21st. We'll be covering what it takes to establish good financial health as a young professional. And we'll cover critical topics such as budgeting, maintaining and establishing good credit, and of course, savings. So make sure you register now at jpmorganchase.com forward slash ABP careers. We hope to see you soon. Thank you.